I'm talking about assumption, testing assumption of vulnerability in a group of five statistical punctuated equilibria. All right, so my research is investigating the evolution of a genus of um, a marine snail found around New Zealand and worldwide near Malda. We're using both genetic and morphometric approaches to um, try and do this. And part of that is trying to link the fossil record to modern populations, so the morphology and genetics being tied together. Um, part of this research is trying to look at how, uh, how the evolution of the email that fit within a model described by punctuated equilibrium. And, and I'm sure you're well aware punctuated equilibrium is based on morphological changes through the fossil record. One of the big assumptions is that there's these long periods of morphological stasis and then there's short rapid bursts of morphological change and these little bursts are associated with speciation. One of the big assumptions with punctuated equilibria and investigating the fossil record is that what you're seeing in the fossil record is part of an evolutionary trajectory that the different fossils you see are evolutionary related to one another. And this means that any morphological changes you see are part of the evolutionary process. However, this is not necessarily always the case. There can be invasion or dispersal events which introduce possibly related but not directly evolutionary descendant morphotypes into the fossil record and it's difficult to tell if it's um, invasion has been or um, an evolutionary process. Um, we can hopefully test for this by testing for the monophyly of the group we're looking at. And in species that uh, are extant with good populations, we can do this using genetics. And so I'll just give you a quick rundown of the amalda. They're part of the olive shell family. Um, they're widespread around almost around the world, and um, very common. It's over a hundred species. Um, they importantly live in soft sediments, and sand or mud, which fossilise very well. And in New Zealand, is an excellent fossil record. And especially important for us is that there are species that are represented in both the fossil record and extend through to the modern fauna. So this is giving us our chance to link genetics to fossil morphology. Um, they're important in the context of punctuated equilibrium because they've been cited by Gould uh, as showing support for the punctuated equilibrium model. This is because a study by Bernard Michaud in 1987 found that their morphology through time was a, showed stasis. In, uh, see that this is, you can see that um, trajectory through time centred on a static mean, so indicating stasis rather than gradualism or uh, random, random morphology. Up until now, the genetics have um, been looked at in terms of an allozyme study, again by Bernard Michaud, and he found that there were distinct genetic clusters, and these were reflecting the, um, current, the recognized taxonomy. And we're going to try and extend this a bit further using more up-to-date techniques. So to start off, I tried to, I collected samples from around New Zealand and amplified a short region of the mitochondrial cytochrome oxidase 1 unit. And again, we get uh, distinct um, genetic clusters consistent with um, recognised taxonomy. There's a few things like the diversity in Imelda australis and the divergence in Imelda depressor that was seen in the allozyme studies is reinforcing that metric as well and a bit more confidence in our results. Also from doing this we're able to select samples to be sent off for next generation sequencing and be confident that those samples are good representatives of the species. Um, and for 
our group selection, we trawled gene bank for any Olividae and other Amalda species. And we got in contact with the French National Natural History Museum, who kindly supplied us with some of their data. This enabled us to select um, a diverse range of outgroups, both uh, genetically and geographically. So we've got samples from Mozambique, Philippines, and New Caledonia. And since I've been at the conference, a colleague from Australia has got some Australian samples for me, so they'll be added into the analysis as soon as I get back. Um, and for the next generation in sequencing, um, we did high throughput sequencing on the Illumina platform, and um, mapped the reads to a reference genome of Genius, and from this we were able to construct seven complete mitochondrial genomes. Um, we had problems of low coverage in a couple of species and in some cases it dropped right down to zero. <coughs> so they're missing they've got some gaps. Um, they've been included in the analysis. A talk by Aaron Malloy the other day indicates that um, missing data is probably benign and possibly beneficial, so it's a reassuring for me. Also able to reconstruct nine ribosomal DNA cassettes to give us a nuclear, some nuclear data. And we were able to get the histone H3 gene out, but it was too well conserved to be of any use in this analysis. So we built the following phylogenies. Um, Bayesian trees were done using Mr. Bayes and maximum likelihood trees in RaxML after gene partitions were analyzed in Partition Finder. Um, pretty good consistency between nuclear and the mitochondrial genome. This, this clay here appearing in the mitochondrial tree is the main difference in topology. And mostly good support for the nodes. There's a couple of low ones um, outside of the New Zealand group. And most importantly for us is strong support for the node that indicates the monophyly of the New Zealand group. So this is giving us a bit more confidence in the assumption of monophyly with the New Zealand amalda, both nuclear and mitochondrial genome and green, which encompasses a wide variety of genes and evolutionary modes. So we can be more confident never going to be completely confident unless we test every species but in the Malta, but fairly confident that there's not an invasion or dispersal event introducing new forms to New Zealand and the forms we are analysing in the fossil record are um, part of an evolutionary process. So where is this, how are we going to go on from here? Bernard Michaud's work was based on single species at a time. Hopefully we can extend our analysis beyond a single species at a time to encompass speciation. Um, now that we're sort of sure we've got um, evolutionary trajectories. And to do this we're using landmark geometric morphometrics to analyze <coughs> the shape variation. To do this we take a um, photo of the shell and place landmarks around certain curves of the shell and analyze these in MorphoJ and the output from that we do principal component analysis separated by geological ages. And using a package paleo TS um, and further splitting the, the morphology into single horizons from the fossil record which are very well date calibrated in New Zealand, we get a, a tr morphological trajectory through time. So um, the analysis also gives an indication using Akaiki weights as to how well it fits one of the three models, stasis, um, GRW, which is pretty much the equivalent of gradualism, and unbiased random walk, which is completely random. In this case, we're seeing stasis. 
what we'd like to do is introduce another species into the analysis. get a dated phylogeny from our gen from the next generation things. We've got to be very careful about dating this because problems of circularity if we're dating from our Malda fossils, so we need to get out outside information to date the phylogeny. But we'll see how well the timing of morphological split morphological speciation and genetic speciation are concurrent. And hopefully answering the other major aspect of the punctuated equilibrium model. Uh, thank you everyone for coming along. Thanks to the Phoenix group and my supervisors and everyone who's helped me information and collecting. Special thanks to the French Natural, <coughs> excuse me, French Natural History Museum and the Marsden Fund for paying for everything and also to the ASN for giving